Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. It's again a pleasure meeting with you all. And we had been dealing with this uh, series, a different one and interesting one though. Um, silent yet powerful personalities. Uh, why we have entitled something like this is because many of us feel we are so quiet, silent, some people even feel one step one step higher that they are useless. They're good for nothing. They have no talent. Is there a way that even God could think of me, right? We all go through these kind of thought process. Um, one side, the medical science calls this kind of habit or thinking as, uh, what is that? Uh, inferiority complex. But the uh, Bible says that this is, absolutely ridiculous because um, we are royal priesthood in the eyes of God. You know where it is written in Bible? And you're all chosen by God. You're all chosen and God has divine purpose, divine will, separate plans and great, great plans in fact. And you're very special people to him. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, you are a chosen generation, a, whole, a royal priesthood. A holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness. Yes, could be that your start was good for nothing, useless and you did some stupid things. But you are called out of darkness in the name of Jesus. And when you walk out of that darkness, being cleansed by the blood of Jesus, there is nothing that can stop you from except flourishing and prosperous and being an instrument for God. And God starts using you as his mouthpiece and his, and his finger. This is how we had been discussing through. We have done two uh, series in Tamil. Uh, almost six sessions we have done talking about various uh, personalities like um, uh, uh, who's that? Um, Nicodemus uh, and um, Bethlehem's donkey. Even God can use donkeys, you know. <laughs> if, if, the, if human beings are not cooperating, he turns towards the animals and the creations. Uh, I think they cooperate with him well more than us, sadly. Okay. Uh, and we have spoken through lots of uh, ladies also in that uh, series. And uh, and again, now here we had been uh, talking through, this is our chapter three, and we had been talking through a couple of ladies, Sarfaraz and Pua and, uh, you know, the Samaritan women and, uh, um, no, not Sarfaraz and Pua, that was in Tamil series, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but the Samaritan women and uh, we had been talking through all these ladies, right? And especially in the last one, we spoke through um, Jael and uh, Deborah, how they enacted a great uh, drama and they actually were the servants of God, courageous, bold ladies, right? Like an, more than an army. They were the ones who defeated. The start was from Deborah and the end was from Jael, the beginning and the end. And yeah, men played a role, but then these two sisters stood like pillars and they ensured that uh, victory is uh, witnessed in that in, the, in that um, army camp. Now in this session, we are going to, so what we are trying to say all the time is never ever think you are ignored or forgotten. You are never been ignored or forgotten by God. He's always watching you, watching over you, neither slumbers nor sleeps. He's engraved you in the palm of his hands. And he's always looking at you. Whenever he looks at his own hands, he always looks at your face and he remembers you. Not just until your last breath and even after that you are going to live with him eternally. Therefore, your relationship with the Father is eternal. Right? We all have to pass away from this world after a period of time. It's not that we can go and <laughs> you know book something over there after my life. You know, I will still dwell in such a such place uh, on this earth. No moment we are dead we are dead and gone maybe our names are remembered for generations but nowadays i don't know people are so busy uh, how many of us would how many of our children's would remember children would remember our names is a big question mark it's not out of uh, any any sentiment uh, or emotions but then that's how the world is and our names will be forgotten by itself witnesses but what will stand tall is the acts right? The deeds, what you have done for God, what you have done for the people of God. That's how the acts of the apostles are um, 
uh, more what i say um, significant than other books why because there are there happen happen to be so many events in the book of acts immediately after jesus is taken away uh, all the apostles they play different role and paul was introduced and it's such a busy uh, jam packed uh, uh, event um, of i mean journey of events yeah such should be your life such should be the witness that is derived out of you Are with me good um now in this session we are going to talk about a female again sister lydia right and uh, definitely all of us might have come across this name very familiar name in bible uh, but it comes only for three four verses that's it and that's why we hand picked uh, this one uh, therefore we can learn more about the principles of this lady uh, lydia and who ended up to be paul's disciple okay so turn your bible turn your bible with me to the book of acts and uh, we will start reading through some of the verses and then from there onwards we will move discussing about the um acts of lydia or some of the accomplishments of lydia have you turned your bibles to uh, the book of acts chapter 16 verses 11 to 15 i will be reading it for you and while reading i may take a pause and just like other um, sessions we will be also touching upon a little bit of the history and uh, it didn't come for free we had to research so much we had to go through some of the materials art artifacts and and then we are able to compare it with the bible and you know present these things many of you have appreciated ideally speaking six sessions we have done in tamil and this is the uh, third session which means nine sessions we have done uh, picking all this kind of ignored passive or soft personalities um, therefore we have much to learn and we can stay encouraged and motivated that god if he could use or any of these sisters or brothers obviously he can use us also therefore stay tuned more is there to come all right good um chapter 16 verses 11 to 15 okay lydia baptized at philippi therefore philippi therefore sailing from troas we ran a straight course to samothrace and the next day came to neapolis and from there to a place called philippi philippi right and that's where philippians was written which is the foremost city of that part of macedonia it's like capital city the capital city of karnataka is bangalore and chennai would be for tamil nadu and mumbai is for maharashtra isn't it so the colony uh, a, a colony and we were staying in that city for uh, some days was studying and on the sabbath day we went out of the city to the river side where prayer was customarily made there was a kind of a uh, custom or a tradition that on every sabbath they used to gather on the river side and prayers were conducted and we sat down and spoke to the women who met there looks like a lot of ladies have gathered together and they came to paul uh, and and paul himself was not a kind of a person who interacts much with ladies because bible doesn't witness however a lot of people with whom he had worked there seemed to be plenty of ladies aquila priscilla couple right and they they both worked with paul too close and there are a lot of helpers like joanna and uh, if you read greetings to these ladies they will be he will be putting uh, but predominantly uh, paul had the habit of working with uh, people like timothy he's like his own son and um, you know titus and uh, uh, even brother luke acts was written by luke you know that luke and acts both were written by Luke and Luke wasn't a disciple he's a Greek and he traveled with Paul most of the times and uh, he recorded those events okay now let's come back here right and all these ladies ganged up and uh, they were talking about Jesus and asking about i mean so many questions from the scriptures who would not even want to talk to Paul tell me <laughs> it's like an ocean you can fish anything you want from that ocean he knows the old testament he knows the new testament you, you even you, you want to ask about what he what happened in the third heaven how will paradise look like the guy knows everything paul is like a university you just get into him and you come out uh, i'm 
learning is guaranteed in fact graduation and certification is also guaranteed everyone would love to talk right he's not a great preacher uh, by by talent or skill peter was a great great preacher but paul used to have the skill of writing that's why he wrote so many epistles uh, imagine while paul was preaching one guy was put to sleep and he fallen he has fallen down from the third floor and he has uh, gone to be with the lord but <laughs> i think in in order not to defame his own uh, his own credibility he went and you know prayed over him and uh, brought him back to life that was a joke uh, but i'm telling you is there anything where you cannot mention paul miracle raising people from dead uh, when he walked over people touched his apron they uh, you know they 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 have felt that healing touch of god and uh, some of the hand keys and kerchiefs right whatever he has used people will use used to keep it over the uh, sick bodies and people were brought to kind of life and um, uh, health and so many miracles right and he he was one of the prominent uh, uh, people who were bold enough even to confront the uh, roman uh, uh, officials and governors and my goodness that there, there, there can't be anybody like paul and that's why paul said follow me before this paul there is a huge, big gathering bunch of ladies gathered maybe some 30 40 ladies i think gathered together and i bible is very silent what kind of questions they asked him um, but then what does bible also saying is he sat down and spoke to the women who met there right he he, he was explaining about um, virginity probably because in first corinthians you can see a lot of rules for the unmarried women married women and marital problems how to deal with your husband husbands how to deal with your wives i'm sure something like that he was explaining explaining over and beyond over and beyond and some of the virgins he might be encouraging stay like me if possible right but you're not able to control your sexual emotions i would encourage you strongly please get married i think bunch of all these things which he wrote in first corinthians second corinthians about a lot of uh, you know um, principles and morals how you could conduct your life right and uh, th- those facts were in, you know kind of enlightening um, uh, uh, th- these ladies and uh, the ideas they they used to have kind of diminished and uh, this new uh, promise of god enlightens their wisdom kind of they were all quite impressed and they were all it was quite meaningful it was quite helpful for these ladies that's what i feel now why i took little more time there is you will understand now i like bible calling something like this now a certain woman named lydia heard us what does it mean you know lydia never had the plan to be part of that women gang probably that women gang was bunch of jewish uh, ladies and uh, and uh, you know they 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 could be pre planning that they want to meet paul in that uh, r- um, you know uh, river um and uh, probably that's a reason it is saying that uh, now a certain woman named lydia heard us heard us means what i think she passed by for some other business or maybe some other work and uh, her intention was not uh, to be part of this gang and uh, be part of this Uh, you know informal meeting what they had with paul uh, but then <laughs> there happened to be some interesting uh, discussions and um, you know yeah some interesting discussions and then um, that really caught lydia's attention and she passes by and stops and then he she started even paying attention and then she started hearing these people's questioning and answering and uh, all this kind of fellowship um, Uh, you know um <clears throat> like that so she was a seller of purple from the city of tyatra who worshiped god the lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by paul very clear right now what happens is the moment that's why bible says in romans 10 17 10 9 open the mouth and confess the name of jesus and uh, through hearing your wisdom will increase and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free john 832 these were the things which were which started happening as an event in the life of lydia the moment she started opening her ears and her heart got enlightened and there is a lot of truth there is a lot of light shed on her and i don't know i think probably she forgot 
the work uh, for which she came or why she passed by i i think she asked all these people to leave hey leave i really want to spend some time here you know i'm hearing something that i haven't heard at all uh, during my lifetime therefore let me spend some time with paul and that also tells that she may not even know or she may not even be knowing uh, who paul was that is a man and surrounded by a bunch of ladies and he, she just goes and joins the gang or she she doesn't even go there probably she's listening to these conversations from a distance right and uh, never ever think this brother or sister if you are far away from a distance from god i am not a minister i am not an evangelist i am not a missionary i have done not done anything i have not even given money to people uh, who are suffering struggling do not worry you have that feeling no you have something burning inside of you right that's what god will look at us and that's what god is so interested whether you have that sense of realization that sense of commitment that you want to do something but you're not able to do is a different thing why because god's timing is different the doors at what timing or which timing he opens is different from what you and i could imagine some people become ministers of god right from their teenage some people are chosen even at the age of 60 late entry yet powerful entry so what do you want brother you want a great testimony behind your ministry behind your work for god behind your deeds uh the holy deeds and the righteous uh, acts of uh, you know commitment or you want to number the years oh i served god for 50 years great but it doesn't matter according to god it doesn't matter right jesus served the mankind only for 3 and a half years and uh, still it's the most remembered and most powerful and no one could even think of dominating that except paul paul to some extent he has touched those records of uh, jesus christ the lord okay now she doesn't get uh, i mean not only admires at paul's responses but she started uh, the lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by paul meaning there were a lot of hidden questions or unanswered questions in the heart of lydia and god opens that heart and surprisingly she is see so far she has not interacted with paul otherwise bible would have witnessed it she was just listening that's how holy spirit also will work with us you know that you will be just questioning secretly in your heart you will be just longing for god to answer secretly it's between you and god inside of you deep within you there will be a cry uh, that you can always hear only you can hear no others cannot hear otherwise they will think you are mad right and they will admit you in a man's hospital or something like that but likewise lydia was having lots of reasoning questions or un- unanswered questions or logical questions and no one could answer her and as she was listening to paul one after the other one after the other the lord starts answering this is the way how i could imagine right imagine if you are just walking by a road and um, you had no idea of stopping by anywhere and suddenly you see a kind of a mob not a mob a crowd and all of them are listening to one person therefore something catches your attention you want to just stand there for a minute okay one minute i'll stand here listen if it makes sense i'll continue else i will make my walk uh, continue something like that right i will stay here else i will um, continue walking um like that she just passes passes by and then she is listening and surprisingly all her questions are getting answered one after the other it gets more interesting verse for number 15 and when she and her household were baptized my goodness this is what puzzles me right something happened between verse 14 and 15 don't you think so how how it is possible for lydia to simply get herself and her household to uh, all the way come and baptize me and then you think not even speaking or uttering a word with paul not in not even uttering a word with paul they took uh, baptism could be may not be but let's see um, then she begged us saying if you have judged me to the to be faithful to the lord come to my house and stay and she constrained us and they ended up staying there um th- this is how the matter ends that's all you won't see lydia's name anywhere else appearing is this all about lydia actually no 
so we did some study on her biography on her um, on, a, on on her past and stuff like that and there are a few facts which we would like to uh, share with you people right and uh, yeah we will start with uh, lydia uh, the city lydia had um, uh, been dwelling itself is by its you know artistic uh, stay, a taste and a strong inclination it had strong inclination towards the uh, luxurious way of living the comfort way of living or the lavish way of living right it seemed to be a very rich city philippi right and uh, lydia's profession was see she established a reputation also for its textile and car carpet industries so she is into manufacturing of this uh, the textile uh, related products like you know the uh, you know dresses and um, purple robes purple robes used to be the most expensive robes uh, those days and it's it's basically used for the royal priesthood kind of thing and that's why jesus when he was to be mocked by the roman soldiers they clothed him with that uh, purple robe right because that color purple color is about the royal priesthood and they put they they just uh, cast a iron of thorns uh, over his head and then you know they started insulting him treating him and that's where so in roman times if you see um, during the roman emperor there are many uh, businesses they promoted and uh, one of those were this wool works and uh, this dyeing dyers dyers you know right they use uh, dyeing for all the clothes and then the various contrasts and colors and uh, and the dress dress i mean the what to say the robes business itself was a was kind of very prominent business right dyers robes and uh, woolworks all these things were so prominent in during the roman era during the romans re regime this was the prominent business therefore lydia is expected to be from a very 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 rich background she is a she was a prominent business woman Uh, in that city and uh, she is known to run the business probably in today's world if you have to compare she is running a textile industry or a textile company and she is the cio or ceo chief executive officer of that company and she you know right when you if you have to meet the ceos you just cannot meet them you have you need to book an appointment they will have uh personal assistants and you need to talk to them and they deal with all sorts of orders and uh, new quotations and etc um, and then their the level of interaction will be completely different such a person was lydia can you imagine she just listens to paul she gets convicted instantaneously she reacts i will get baptized and she pulled all her household come all of you listen to paul and get baptized finished wow what an exemplary character isn't it many of us read bible for so many years of course we get convicted then after and then after we take so many years on uh, to meditate on that conviction or to realize that conviction or to think through that conviction and then we took our take our sweet own, own time to react for example forgiving a brother or sister for example some people speak lies for no reasons or foul languages you get convicted but then to give away that habit or to forgive others you will take your sweet time that's not actually called conviction brother that's not even called as realization that's called as arrogance that's called as the habit of stout heart you don't care actually you're you're saying god you might have told the truth but let me think through it you're saying that you're more than god but lydia had none of these concepts known before she just heard the truth from paul and all her questions are seem to get answered one after the other and there she is with her household and she got baptized all right now little bit about her biography right now lydian perfumes were sold in containers of an elegant shape known as lydian right they had a brand that's what history says can you imagine she runs a company she is the ceo and they have a brand lydian brand and uh, they sell perfumes not just the cloth uh, dye making and also the perfumes right and uh, the, <laughs> there there are a lot of uh, you know craftsmanship and the metallurgy related work involved and uh, looks like that is also part of her uh, business and 
Lydia was known for her riches, art and industries and also she was known to someone to be called as one of a prominent entrepreneur, right? Prominent entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship basically depends on uh, all kinds of social uh, socialization and interactions and uh, um, you know meetings and the business uh, calls and stuff like that and uh, they always are in a gathering and she had a tremendous uh, influencing skills right the business folks they know how to convince people I think Lydia was one among them don't you don't you think our God touches and uses the right people with the right skills Philippi in those days was filled with full of paganism paganites complete paganites right and there is nothing much written about Lydia's uh, ancestry um, probably it is assumed that Lydia herself was a pagan and uh, God touches her right and who got who had got so much of network right and uh, she is well known per, well known person well renowned also right well established you name any you name Lydia in the middle of any market or any shopping complex or malls or even shops there isn't a person who wouldn't know her yeah and 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 uh, yeah, that's how her introduction comes to be, right? Um, and then if you see, the knowledge of dye making was a very, a very traditional um, thing. And then it was a kind of a secret, um, uh, what to say, secret recipe is what you call it as, right? And only few people were into that business. And Lydia was one among, one among them, right? And the Lydian purple market, especially, they manufactured the purple dyed clothes and she was known for it right Lydia means oh that purple uh, uh, market right and or purple robes they might make right this is how they recognize Lydia they are well known for that kind of uh, brand uh, Lydian brand and all that so uh, so she hailed a little bit about Lydia's background is from a historically well-known place of Asia Minor and had a rich inheritance in the art of dyeing this is how uh, she is renowned as a so as a business person right her constant contact would have been mostly with the royal people that's what history is saying royal people means what uh, the kings and the queens and the governors and the ministers and the, uh, even some of the centurions and uh, centurions wives and i think probably almost all the people who were in that top cater i think they had a close connectivity with this lady there can't be a person who would not know her why because those days this functions festivals and uh, you know family gathering wow it used to happen almost every day right and some or other celebrations used to happen and definitely you know right what is the first thing that comes on top of our mind if there is a celebration what dress do i wear on that day what suit do i order or which shoes i pick up right or what hat do I wear? Which color? I think this was the talk of the town. Therefore, one person who can, who could never be forgotten or ignored is Lydia. Or was Lydia. Right? You understood? She was a quite prominent person. Quite famous, popular. And she had all uh, connections with the top, top people. And uh, she has a strong influencing skill. She's an entrepreneur. My goodness. She's such a material that we all could... Uh, study from her character, right? Um, An attitude. Now we are yet to talk about her uh, ministry for God. We will, we will, we will conclude this biography study in a moment, right? Uh, she did not live a scheduled life. She was a very busy person, and uh, she had the varied strata of society. Um, and then her interpersonal relationship out to uh, have been, you know, well uh, poised and positioned, right? And even if the business um, had been established when her husband was alive, uh, as she had carried on a thriving business, it proves that she was a very, very successful entrepreneur. History says that, oh, how can I forget this, right? Lydia uh, is a, is a, was a widow. Her husband died. And what history says is at a very young age, her husband passed away. And then she had to carry over that family business. And then she did not even think twice uh, to get into the shoes of her husband. And uh, probably she ended up meeting with more men. Yet, she was very careful in safeguarding her uh, culture, virginity and stuff like that, right? And she would not get into any sorts of uh, no nonsense such as, you know, flirting with somebody and all that. And neither is the history saying she got remarried again. No. 
but then she was quite focused on what she wants to do. Very sincere female, very hardworking. And don't you think God chose the right person? Attitude wise, talent wise, capability, skills, and especially the attitude, right? She wants to learn more. She wants to learn more and she wants to exercise that learning energetically and, you know, share it with others and take it to the next level. She, she doesn't get stagnant. And uh, that's how she promoted the business of her husband. When it was handed over to her, it was in some state. But then after she took over, it really flourished. That's what, you know, history witnesses. Now, Lydia's intuition led her to carry on the business Though there might have been certain hindrances in life, for example, her husband's death, uh, she did not yield to despair, but rose above it and continued in fact. And she was focused to extend the business line. Just now I had been explaining, right? Always she was focusing um, not on the bad things that happened, not about the past, but she has the attitude of rising up higher, rising up taller and moving ahead. Don't you think this is one of the principles that you and I definitely need to learn from her? What a sad incident. A young widow, she could have got married to someone and continued to cook and be remain, remain in the kitchen as a homemaker. Probably she was playing that role while her husband was taking care of the business and he goes to work and uh, she, he comes in the evening and she takes good care of him. Right? Uh, but Lydia thinks differently. Yes, brothers and sisters, I think this is how our mindset also should be positioned. Um, we shouldn't be uh, we shouldn't be sticking to the same old nature and stature, but according to the situation, we got to change our mindset and our thought process and quickly get aligned into somebody's shoes. And it's not that anything is uh, impossible, by, especially with Bible, with men it is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. My, Matthew 19, 26 and Philippians 4, 13, in Christ who strengthens me, I can do all things. One who has the confidence in God, right? They will not even think twice to try out anything, but you cannot venture into many things simultaneously. That's act of stupidity or without the situation even forcing you to try out certain things. You don't have to, some people keep changing jobs every six months. No, brother, I don't like this job. Uh, because that guy is, uh, you know, really hurting me. Every day he asks me to say good morning. You know, in the next company, if you go, your boss will ask you to polish your shoes. What will you do? Again, you will change the company. I'm not saying you should tolerate that kind of attitude where people treat you like slaves. But then those cannot be the reason for you to switch over from one place to other or, you know, get, get uh, you know, get kind of, you know, refocus or uh, de uh, you know, reshift your focus upon something else. There, there should be some solid reason like how it happened for Lydia, right? And she was the one, somebody needs to step into his, her, bus, her, her, her husband's shoes and take care of the family business. Probably there were a lot of people in the family were dedicated to this business. And if this is not flourishing, all of them will lose their jobs. Their families will starve. She had that kind of courage and attitude where I'm, no, I'm going to definitely do something about this. And that's called as leadership skill. That's called as interpersonal skills. Sounds like a corporate session today, isn't it? Okay, we'll come sl slowly towards the spiritual aspect of it. And on the Sabbath day, uh, what happened? You have just now we read it for you from Acts chapter 16 verses 13 to 14 or 15. Right? And... Uh, now, uh, if you can see, um, Paul, has his, Paul, Paul was one of the prominent student in the uh, during the time of Gamaliel. We all know this, and uh, he was also one of the prominent Jewish rabbis and preachers in the synagogue. And therefore, uh, listening to him is always a kind of, um, I would say, it's so fantastic, isn't it? Somebody like him. Uh, talking and that's one reason where Lydia was really attracted. Why? Because she had never heard probably in her lifetime anyone talking like this. Neither she had gone into synagogue and they were basically from all kinds of you know paganite uh, backgrounds and you know that that entire city is known for the paganism. <clears throat> so it is significant <clears throat> that the first people Paul preached to in Europe were women, right? <laughs> Looks like it's the first trip for uh, Paul. Uh, in the soil of uh, Europe and uh, there he ended up uh, talking to women 
and uh, that's where you know we always had been talking about women in these sessions why because um the among the mankind the women community really have gone through lots and lots of harassments lots and lots of uh you know situations where they went treated like slaves and downtrodden and ignored and uh, stipulated within a boundary and all that and that's where you know god really breaks that bondage and he uses you know these these women in such a fantastic way uh, they they ended up being more than warriors more than men right okay? and that, that's why we are basically you know this these are so encouraging to sisters but men don't get disappointed demotivated right there are principles you can apply uh to to yourselves too and it does god is not biased god is not uh, par, you know god of partiality he is just god and he uses anyone anywhere right um therefore no doubts about it now he is often what to say uh he is often been uh, picturized who paul is often picturized as a uh as a male eva- male male chavinist right uh, that means like he is so attracted towards the um not not from a different meaning but then he always likes to interact more with the male i mean with the brothers right more than sisters probably one reason could be like he was bachelor and if somebody notices that he's gelling too much around a uh, female and without her husband or maybe a virgin female people may talk ill about him that's one reason probably paul would have ended up uh, picking up brothers for his ministry but he had a big team of Uh, sisters also probably who helped him in you know cooking getting some food and you know all those kind of things they might be helping right um and he was not prejudiced as his uh, eagerness to speak with this group shows um if you see as i told you right paul is not well renowned to uh, speak in a kind he is not a well renowned speaker at all he is a well renowned writer and especially talking in crowd i don't think he is well used to it okay now uh, now paul uh, see another reason why paul is basically among the women is because uh, he was the one uh, who always thank god that were there the, you know the, there are the uh, for for spreading the gospel to the gentiles and especially to the slaves like philemon was one of them and especially to the women so he he his primary ministry is to ensure that the gospel reaches to the one uh, to the ones that are that have not been given a chance not even once in their life and uh, neither would they know they would get a chance in their lives and paul's uh, reach was towards these kind of people and women used to be there therefore i'm just telling you how the bonding would have happened between paul and uh, lydia and lydia's household lydia's entire family these could be the possible reasons is what we are talking from the history perspective right and uh, you could uh, you could you could also see we we told you right many ladies helped him one of them were uh, eudia uh, scientic scientic in romans chapter 16 verse 1 romans chapter 16 verse 3 um, and uh, philippi philippians uh, chapter 4 verses 2 and 3 i will read only uh, chap, you know philippian philippians chapter 4 verses at uh, 2 and 3 i'm turning my bible as fast and as early as i could forgive me if i if i couldn't match up your speed i'm sorry uh i'm in ephesians philippians uh, sorry philip philippians uh, chapter 4 verses 2 and 3 i implore eudia and i implore scientic to be of the same mind in the lord and i urge you also true companion help these women who lab who labored with me in the gospel with clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life rejoice in the lord always again i will say rejoice you understand so these ladies played a key role and lydia used to be one among them but she was not part of the gang before okay <laughs> all right now some of the uh, things which you could uh, see uh, extract as a character from lydia or as a personality who had uh gone through some of the damages in her life is she had a bruised heart right um and bible says um a bruised reed he will not break matthew chapter 12 verse 20 if you can take and read i think she was a chosen vessel based on that verse and he uh, god probably picked her because she never stepped back in her morals she never stepped back in her principles 
and she stood by the uh, family's commitment all these things sincerity right and the honesty he liked it and that's why that opportunity was given and she had a bruised heart uh, is or a broken heart you should, you should understand that and if today is that is your situation brother sister that you want you wanted to do something for god but situation circumstance your health doesn't permit you at all to do something do not worry lydia's situation was so but then god had his own timing and he reached out to her um and another other characters of uh, lydia's she had a sort of moving ahead attitude which i told you already right she would not be stuck to the present or the past always focusing you know how the entrepreneurs or the business uh, people think right they will have planning for the next one year some people even for next 10 years i heard even microsoft has projects for 2050 they have projects until 2050 they are very clear what they want to achieve in this world <laughs> yeah so very very shocking isn't it um, such was the character was uh, of lydia but then she wasn't the prominent business woman when uh, while during the days of her husband but she immediately took over that role and her learning skills were exemplary that's what impressed god see you may be a brother in christ but if you're not learning brother you're not able to change your life style you're not able to change your thought change, change your style and change your attitude and you do things for god there is nothing in this world god can do anything about you only thing the year gets added your number of years gets added to your spiritual walk with god and it makes no difference finally god would say i knew not who you are right and uh, the next uh, principle that we can learn from lydia she had a trait of undertaking risks in life right she had the skill she had that potential and uh, she had that courage being a lady who had lost her husband and uh, you know the family uh, business and if something goes wrong she they will end up in loss uh, and they may not be able to repay even the debt those days you are not able to repay the debt oh my goodness you will be it's almost like you know self suicidal and she had that calculated risks in her mind and she started applying those and she became really successful and it was not easy she had a lot of planning and strategy you may be in a corporate industry or you may be a business person too uh, these are the things which you can think through brother sister and thirdly she had not allowed her heart to fester with deep wounds right uh, you can understand right at an young age losing an husband is not easy yet you will not see that sadness in her wherever she is she where she went or wherever she would go she brings that cheer and people wonder right how are you, how is she able to behave like this or how is that brother be always joyful i think without her knowledge she possessed that joy and peace two important fruits of the holy spirit in her regardless of circumstances especially when situations turn against us which we do not like which we would not have expected unfortunate incidents even happens you will not still uh, lose your joy and peace you will still be the same stable person she had that kind of astounding confidence in her mind she wasn't filled with the holy spirit she had not accepted jesus yet by nature and stature she was very confident person and she would want to move ahead and move ahead only in success and victory and prominence nothing else no failure no errors no mistakes etc no stupidity she doesn't even turn her eyes towards that what if it happens like this what if this ends ends up to be like like a disaster no such thoughts no looking for only success and making it work marching towards victory and defeating the battle this is the way how her mind and thought process was working and that's why god was impressed right and she wants to climb the ladder higher and higher and god has designed a higher purpose for her okay now after she accepted god there are a lot of things um that lydia was witness to be doing for Uh, god and interestingly she was the believer and the first convert in the city of philippi among the women who all who all had been he knew um, i mean lydia's passionate heart and uh, you know luke brother luke was there right and he singles her out of the rest of the women uh, luke was the writer no 
of who wrote book of acts he singles lydia out see many women were gathered even before lydia could reach that place but none of the women's uh, name would feature over there but luke singled out this lady which means there something happened as an interaction between paul and her between that two events right lydia listens and then she and her household baptizes which means there happened to be some powerful interaction between paul and lydia the way how she was reasoning questioning and she wants to get convinced and very meaningful questions spiritual questions that eagerness that enthusiasm that anxiety for god that desperateness wow luke was impressed saying that and i think it's inspired by the holy spirit and she were singled out she was singled out and the second major shocking event is immediately she said where is pool of water come give us baptism finished wow what a heart right um and and not just the, no, she didn't leave it there she got baptized and she went and told all of the households meaning that includes her family members relatives brothers cousins father mother servants laborers she had a big company right probably maybe tens and hundreds and thousand people or more than that could be working over there in the textile industry includes shipping also right delivering it to the customers place and taking orders i think she had a big business she was an entrepreneur she ensured look at her skills look at her potential look at her courage look at her the energy level do we do that she walks across i think probably she took off for a month or so and she revolves around the globe and she goes and gathers them and bible doesn't talk about the tenure but it looks like it happened all so very quick i think she didn't sleep for the next 24 to 48 hours she was only in the business of moving from place to place you 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 come here and she will tell the gospel i have got baptized you also get baptized and lydia was a role model she was an exemplary uh, example of uh, to all the people she said i i got baptized oh lydia you yourself got baptized yeah? fine fine i will we will also do that she put herself the next principle is she always exhibits her leadership character or leadership role model right she she does things as a example to people that's what jesus did right he demonstrated the character the attitude the fruits of the holy spirit and he says and and, and therefore jesus say as how jesus would say as how i have overcome uh, this world you can also overcome not without doing anything he said that right he overcame everything the temptations from his teenage days and all the all the way to the ministerial days and how many challenges how many battles with the demonic forces and with the pharisees and sadducees people would be coming to wage war with them for no reasons and uh, he would say yeah i overcome all of those temptations therefore you can also overcome like me john 16:33 lydia stood as an example to others right and uh, all her household were completely you know baptized and therefore you know what is the next step she took obviously she dedicated her life as a missionary and history says that um <clears throat> acts chapter uh, 16 verse 15 you you might get a uh, sneak peek of that but then uh, history says that she was a very very powerful uh, minister of god and uh, you know she could never be ignored by god <laughs> okay uh, sorry i'm in john i'm i have to go to acts now give me a moment please uh, yeah acts chapter uh, 16 verse 15 yeah and when she and her household were baptized she begged us saying if you would come uh, to be judged to be faithful and to the lord see paul is a good judge and he's a prophet also right he knows Uh, what is in the heart and holy spirit reveals and that's why i don't think paul is a type who would be standing by anyone's house or you know passing by anybody's house or getting inside and have a kind of a drink or as how you know many pastors do that today right they go for house visits and they pick the houses when they want to eat well they go somewhere when they want to drink well they go somewhere paul is not of that type he's not of a cheap uh, you know uh, pastoral material <laughs> he was one of the prominent guys and a very decent fellow he doesn't even gel much with women yeah to preserve his character but this guy i mean paul when she emphasized he agrees okay fine i'll come why because he, he saw that kind of faithfulness 
he saw that kind of goodness these are the fruits of the gifts uh, fruits of the holy spirit okay and he saw the light of life shining in lydia and therefore he decides um no lydia as a disciple she did much actually if you see uh, romans chapter uh, 12 we will be referencing a lot of um, uh, verses from now onwards romans chapter 12 verse 13 if you see uh distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospital hospitality rejoicing in the tri- tribulation uh in the romans right be kindly and bless those who pers- persecute you and uh, yeah especially distributing to the needs of the saint why it is mentioned here is she was one among them uh who gave uh, you know cherishingly or uh, cheerfully um and uh, that's why you know there paul was specifying that there were people who distributed to the needs of the saints and uh, i would like to turn to hebrews uh, chapter 13 verse 2 um <clears throat> do not forget to entertain strangers for by doing so some have unwittingly entertained uh, angels <laughs> uh, remember the prisoners as of chained so what it means is 1 peter 4 9 also we, we may want to read and then i will explain a moment hang on um be hospitable to one another without grumbling see why we reference these verses is because um especially women are required to have that hospitality right because i'll tell you by nature god created women in such a way that they have that warmth when when a female talks to the same gender or to the opposite gender there is some sort of warmth being felt and that's why sisters are very special in the eyes of god and they are they they need to have that hospitality and lydia was having lot of hospitality that's what bible witnesses and uh, you know for especially for the christian uh, <clears throat> fellow servants and the christian ministers uh, she used to be very helpful and she was already prominent right she was very rich and she probably used all her money for uh, you know the the missionary work and uh, what not and lydia was a pioneer of the uh, philippian church right and the church was planted in philippi can you ever believe that lydia would not have uh, you know got that land for the church or you know maybe all that is needed to build the church i think she played a major role there all the bible is quite uh, passive but she was the first convert in europe who paved the way for the first church in philippi she holds that credit even today yeah you, you know if you think about this lady she was the first person and she needs to be remembered by everyone but i have hardly people uh, talk about her and that's the reason we picked her name um philippians chapter 4 <clears throat> we're also referencing from bible and we are trying to cover everything that we could uh, philippians uh, chapter 4 uh, verses 14 to 16 i want to read for you there is something over there Uh, nevertheless you have done well that you shared in my distress now you philippians see listen know also that in the beginning of the gospel when i departed from macedonia no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only for even in thessalonica you sent aid once and again for my necessities see why i referred here is the church in philippi philippians church used to be a lot of giving uh, you know they give lot of offering they send lot of offering the needs materials to the churches planted in thessalonica and also in the macedonia right and uh, who was there in the church of philippi one of the prominent leaders women leaders absolutely lydia and her contribution was may was the key there and that's why paul never forgets to uh, thank for what kind of service lydia does there and these are the things which we need to carefully notice when we read bible we need to uh, you know connect the dots so clearly therefore we don't ignore at least paul didn't ignore he had that attitude of gratitude to thank for what uh, lydia had been doing um, in, uh, during his days as how the church started to grow see as the church started to grow there will be lot of needs they will need food clothing shelter and uh, for for ministry they'll need money right they need to travel from place to place and uh, i think what i could imagine is we are almost closing what i could imagine is if you may be a rich brother you may be a rich sister or you may be a sister in christ or you may be a brother not in christ it doesn't matter your looks your uh, 
uh, your wealth, your outlook, your society, your status in the society does not matter to God. We spoke about some of the females who was kind of not even known. See, imagine a lady living in the tent, jail. Yesterday we were talking about her, right? God could use her to kind of defeat the chief commander of the um, Canaanite army. Uh, just with one peg and hammer, she nailed him down to the ground and she killed him. Where the entire army of Israel, 10,000 men, couldn't do that. Sister escaped from them. But one female, using her wisdom and courage, God, fought the battle for Israel. Likewise, there, there is an opposite side of uh, Jael. Who? Lydia. Uh, broken heart and at an end gate, she was, she, unfortunately, she lost her husband and she stood for her family with courage and prominence. And then she took the business line to the next level and she flourished. And she was a strategist. She was an entrepreneur. She was the CEO of the textile company, what she was owning. And they were having so many businesses and they had a brand, Lydian, right? In 192, um, uh, that is like 192 AD, in the first century, uh, she used to have that uh, brand and they preserved some of the products of that brand even today. Right. And it's not easy, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, this is not something that anyone can uh, easily switch over from one role to another role. But Lydia did that and God saw that sincerity. That's why it's very important that we need to learn to live our lives in sincerity and have that flexibility. When God allows something that you do not like, when God allows something uh, that is against your thought, maybe a sickness, maybe a problem in the family, maybe a uh, issue at the workplace or Maybe something you are trying for years. It's just not flourishing. It's not working for you. Do not worry, right? But start focusing on something else and keep trying, a different, trying out different things. That was the strategy of Lydia. That was the attitude of Lydia. And God said, you know what, Lydia, you are the best person for me. I will use you as my vessel. And she still holds the privilege of first con convert in the uh, soil, European soil, and then Philippi was a church planted, and then from there onwards, uh, she started even donating a lot of things and giving a lot of things. I would definitely, I can't even imagine how Lydia was uh, dead. I think history doesn't witness, but I'm certainly sure that she lived as a true disciple in Christ, and she had given all her money, earnings to the poor, downtrodden and needy. I think she has a bigger position. Uh, in the um, uh, in the kingdom of heaven and in the book of life, truly Lydia inherited the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness in her heart. May we all start to ask God, whatever may be your position in this society, brother, you may be rich, you may be poor, you may be tall, you may be short, it doesn't matter. But then have that sincere heart. Please ask God for that sincere heart. Please conduct yourself with honesty before God and have that kind of anxiety. Lydia didn't know Bible. Lydia had not gone to synagogue. But then the moment she heard, she immediately submitted and surrendered her life. She was very submissive, humble enough. She never thought like, yeah, hey, oh, I'm a big entrepreneur. Why I should even listen to this fellow? Who is he? No. The moment realizations and the unreasoning, unre uh, what to say, the unanswered questions in her heart were answered by God, not even knowing which God is that. She accepted. That's called as faith. That's why she said, look at my faithfulness. If you trust in that, please come and stay in my house. Paul went. Paul saw that Holy Spirit, uh, you know, kind of told Paul, I'm, I'm truly impressed and inspired by this lady. And a great ministry was given into her hands. God can use you. God can use me. God can use all of us. Only thing we need to have an attitude and mindset that is similar to Lydia. All of us, let us close our eyes. Let the heads be bowed down. And let's look up to the Father in heaven. A short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful session. We want to thank you for helping us to understand about the, the uh, passive personalities or the ignored people or people who are con considered the least in the Bible. That God, you did bigger things, mightier things through these people. What a wonderful uh, <clears throat> uh, session to learn about these um, personalities. And God, this is such an encouraging moment of time that if you could use these people who were considered as the least or who are completely in a different background, yeah, of course, we have our chances too. Therefore, we are going to wait in anxiety that one day you're going to reach out to us and you're going to help us and use us as your instruments, ministers. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I bless our brethren and sisters, whoever is listening, uh, please convict their hearts and speak to them in a personal way 
and lead them according to thy divine will and plan. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. Stay tuned. Um, this will be the end of uh, episode one. You can go to the playlist uh, in, 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 in my YouTube channel. You can subscribe um, and you will get access to all the playlists over there. And we will be shortly getting into episode two, where we will be discussing about the Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles means not the book of Acts. Um, we won't talk about Peter or Paul. They are well-renowned personalities or well, you know, very popular folks. Uh, but we will be talking about uh, the smaller characters like, you know, Philip, Andrew, Bartholomew. Some people don't even know 12 disciple names. Everybody knows Peter, John, James, Judas the Iscariot, and, uh, you know, a couple of others who are quite popular. But there are people who did a lot of things for God too. And Thomas was there and all that. Uh, Thomas came to India. So people, all the Indians probably know him. Okay, uh, but we are going to talk about some other uh, apostles who were not mentioned much, who are not mentioned much or spoken about in the Bible. And stay tuned. We will meet you soon. All right. God bless you.